Hey guys, I just want to give you a little overview and a tour of all these uh, node group editing features that I've been working on lately. And uh, yeah, to start with, um, let's just go ahead and create a little cycles node tree. Just quickly set this up. Rendered cube. All right, shader nodes and use nodes. All right, here we are. So. Um, let's just start by making this diffuse shader into a node group by pressing Control G. Uh, the first thing you'll notice if I now press the Tab key to edit this node group is that you don't get uh, one of these editing boxes around the node group anymore, but instead it will open the node group in a just regular node tree like all the other node trees uh, too. And, uh, well, the reason for this is basically that it, it makes node editing much more uh, cleaner and uh, more much more consistent. Because now we can also do funky stuff like take this shader again and press Ctrl G again. And we made just a second node group inside the other node group. So uh, you can now actually create groups inside groups. Press tab again and you're in the second group. Um, now this, uh, of course, this makes it a little difficult to actually know on which level you are, which is not all that important, but um, so you can uh, see this in the lower left corner, there's a uh, node group path now. So you see the first one is the material, that's our basic node tree, and then we have node group and node group 001, those are the, the, two, node, uh, the two group nodes that we are in now. Uh, press tab again and you're in the parent level. Uh, now I, I have to deselect this node group because if I now press tab it will just uh, toggle between these two node trees. So I deselect the node group, press tab and I'm in the parent again. Uh, you can also when you're in this level and have the group node selected uh, you can also press shift tab to get to the parent right away. Uh, so you don't always have to care about which uh, node group is selected now. It makes it a little easier. Yeah, so that's uh, a very cool feature, I think. And, uh, well, the, the next thing you uh, will also have noticed is uh, that you don't have these columns on the side of the, uh, of the group editing box anymore where all the inputs and the outputs of the group node are listed. So in this case we have just this BFDS, uh, BSDF sorry, uh, output. And uh, in Blender Trunk you'd have an entry on the in the right column here with a link to it uh, that uh, tells you which of these outputs are exposed in the group node. However, that's a problem because uh, you can get very long and nasty links and uh, it's a pretty ugly business. So um, I replaced this with these uh, input and output nodes. Um, for example, let me just delete this and add a regular node here, just a diffuse shader. So um, for example, if we wanted to have this color and expose this as an input in the group node, then uh, what I do is press the shift key and then drag a link from the socket to some empty space. And if I release this now, I get a new input node. And back to the parent level, you see we now have this input in the group node. So that's great. Um, this is a lot easier to handle than, than these uh, socket lists in the, in the left and right side. And uh, it also gives you a lot more flexibility by placing these things. They they work really just like regular nodes. So you can also do stuff like uh, connect an input to multiple internal nodes, for example. Or you can uh, take this output and just relink it internally. It doesn't matter for the output. And all the links on the output side stay as they are. It doesn't change anything. Uh, and of course, 
you'll see these nodes are collapsed at the moment. If I press H to expand them, you can see that you can have here all these uh, different settings for the input. For example, uh, first and foremost, of course, the name. And we can just rename this, I don't know, something like that. And you see the name on the out outside has changed. We can also do uh, set other things, for example, you can explicitly set a different type for this thing. Um, initially, uh, the type, of course, is the, the type of the socket we just exposed, but you can uh, set this to something else, for example, if you want to have this as a single value, then you can uh, set this to value, and on the outside, you'll see that uh, you can now input some sort of value here, and it will, it will internally be converted into a grayscale image then. Um, and you have uh, a lot of different other settings, for example, you can set a subtype here for more uh, button details, you can set custom limits if you want, um, and of course the default value, which if I change this here, uh, it won't directly change the uh, setting here, but uh, what it will do is if I create a new instance of this node group, um, it will have the initial value that we set on the inside, minus 13 point something. That's what we set here. So this is just uh, the default value. Usually you don't really ch need to change a lot here, um, just the name and maybe the default value. So this is collapsed by default. And a uh, similar thing on the outside, on the output side. Uh, by default though, here you see uh, the type is set to auto, which means that um, whatever you plug into this socket will automatically change the type of the output. That's just uh, for convenience, for example. If I take a mix node here and plug in a color, it will automatically change the type to color, because there's only one link to the output, and uh, usually that's, that's what you want the output to be. But you can also set this to something different. For example, we always want a vector output here. Set this to vector. Alright, so that's that. And, uh, yeah, the, the last uh, important feature I want to show you is pinning, which is now also possible for node trees. So, for example, if I just create a second object here and use a different node tree, just go back so you see this. And uh, let's say we use a an emission shader here. Just so you can distinguish them. Uh, and now if I switch between these objects, it will display the uh, the object uh, the node tree from the current context from the selected object here. Uh, but you may not always want this. For example, if you're editing a node tree. A uh, node group, and you use this in both of these materials. For example, let's say I just take one of these I had before, and no, that's not good. <laughs> Let me just, uh, for example, take an RGB value, doesn't matter, like a node group, go inside and expose this color here, that's what we want. And I want to use this node group in both of these materials. Second material, this is our node group, link this here. And now I want to uh, edit this node group and stay here and modify this while we are actually editing the uh, the color here. I can, because if I now toggle between these things it will always select the, the root node tree. Um, but if I go into this uh, node group and select the pin button, it will stay at this node tree. And I can, sele can select these different objects and, for example, work on these two node trees while at the same time changing this internal node group. That's just one option you have for the pinning. Alright, so I think that's it for now. Hope you like it. And let me know if you have any questions or suggestions, and see you next time.